Your first LPGA Tour victory here at the Mizuho Americas Open and, and another big achievement on your end um, that I want to highlight first and foremost. Why don't you go ahead and tell us um, your exciting news? Yeah, I'm super excited. You guys will see me more in the future on the LPGA Tour as I am taking membership from now on. Um, and I'll be playing in 2023. <laughs> Yes, with this, Rose has accepted immediate LPGA Tour membership. You will get CME points and official money for this one. So congratulations on Thank that. Thank you. Let's talk about your day today at the Mizuho Americas Open. I'm sure everyone has a lot of burning questions, but what are your thoughts on the round today? I'm sure there were tons of nerves. Um, so just take us through your day today before all the craziness started. Yeah, um, Liberty National is already a very difficult course to be playing on, and especially with the winds gusting up in the afternoon. Um, afternoon tee times are always hard on here. Um, but for me, I I really just had to stay composed throughout the round. Um, you know, when you're... When you're under pressure, um, birding is very difficult. Um, and going at flags, sometimes it's just not smart. And um, I didn't really give myself the most opportunities that I have given myself the prior days. Um, so I've just been scrambling for pars. And um, I'm fortunate to have really grinded um, throughout the round and only managed two bogeys. But uh, I thought I played pretty solid throughout the day. Um, my, my swing was a little bit fumbled, but um, apart from that, um, I, was, I was putting pretty well, and my wedge game has really helped me. You had several big moments throughout your round. I think the long par putt on 17, um, the long playoff putt. What would you say was the biggest moment for you today? I would say one was... 17 that par putt um especially with me missing a little five six footer um on the previous hole um i really had to tap into um a good putting stroke and commit to my lines um especially on 17 had a really difficult lag putt and managing to make that nine footer uh, really gave me the confidence to go to the next hole um but the final shot um, on 18, the second shot, was one of the best shots that I've ever hit, um, especially with me being under pressure. Um, managing to hit a 180-yard shot to six, seven feet um, has really enabled me to put myself in a position where um, I can two-putt for par and seal the deal. So. Um, yeah, it was it was a very difficult shot with the wind going um, pushing against me, but it went well. <laughs> Amazing. Um, I won't take up too much of our media's time, as obviously we have a lot of members here. So where are we starting? All right, Sarah has the first mic. Rose, I mean, what a week. Um, what did it mean to do this? I mean, obviously Excel puts it on this event, but what did this mean to, what did it mean to you to do this in front of um, Michelle Wee West, who's somebody that you, I think you've been compared to a little bit um, coming out this early, but what did it mean to, to just have that conversation with her, have that moment with her on the green uh, when it was finally, finally done? Yeah. Um... I know that this has been said throughout the week, but I can't emphasize it enough. Michelle Wee is a true influence to the game of golf, to women's golf, and for her to come out and host and for her to come out and support um, me is just so incredible. Um, She's just such a great mentor, such a great friend, and um, especially seeing her on 18, um, that really brought me to tears. Um, I really thought about all the efforts that she puts into this event um, to make it possible, and um, she's just been so supportive from day one, and especially with this week being my pro debut, she really gave me some words just to have fun, go out there and do what you know. Um, and especially this morning, uh, she also texted me, and she went out of her way to text me. Um, that's not something that a lot of people do, but, um, you know, I take these words very seriously, and I'm sure that, you know, it, it's just a true honor. Um, but she was like, good morning, smiley face, and then proceeded with a go out there, we're proud of you, have fun, and 
just go kill it, get the job done. So um, even simple words like that, um, it just shows that Michelle is very detail oriented with um, being around people. And I'm really thankful for everything that she's done this week. I asked you this yesterday and it's kind of a two part question, but did you expect this? And um, where, you know, what have you learned now that 72 holes are over and you have the trophy in your hand? Answer is no. <laughs> I honestly didn't even expect to make the cut. And um, the reason why I say this is because I don't think about my expectations a lot. I think about um, playing the golf course. I think about trying to shoot the best score that I can. Obviously, I have frustrations, disappointments with my game, but I never once think about where I finish, where I should finish, etc. cetera. So um, with that in mind, the expectations for me winning did not even cross my mind. Um, and I was just playing my game. Uh, I was having a good time out there. Um, this is the game that I love, and I'm so thankful to be a professional doing it now. And then just finally, um, finals next week. Those on your mind at this point, <laughs> or uh, you know, let that sit until like Monday or Tuesday. It is most certainly on my mind. I have no idea what I'm gonna do with that. Um, I've got an essay due. I've got a piece set due for CS. Um, so we'll we'll figure that out. But um, I'm also moving out on the 13th. So uh, I have a busy week ahead of me, and it's not golf related. <laughs> Next question here in the room, yes. Hey, Rose, Gene Wong with the Washington Post. It took Annika 34 starts to win her first PGA Tour, LPGA Tour win, and Lorena Ochoa 33, and Lydia Ko 10. You do it in your first time. How do you put that into perspective against those players? I did not know that stat, first of all. Um, that is, it's just so cool. I'm so blessed. Um, I feel like I've been given this platform um, to try to do the best that I can, be an influence to younger generations. And um, that's all I kind of think about. Um, I don't think about the stats of, hey, in 10 starts, I'm going to have my first LPGA Tour win. Um, or it's my first time. I should be winning. <laughs> so um, yeah, these are not things that I think about. But I just, I can only say that this is just amazing. And um, I'm really just in a place where I want to improve myself and I want to keep on doing um, better and better. Um, so we'll, we'll be seeing what I do in the future. But as of now, I'm just soaking it all in. <laughs> How did your experiences at Augusta, where you came back and at your, at, instead of like a title, we had to come back to hope you kind of grind it out today. It's quite interesting because um, I feel like once I finished out 18 and signed my scorecard, I knew I was going back out there. It felt exactly like Augusta National. Um, and even though playoffs are never comfortable, uh, I felt like it was such a familiar position that I've been in before that uh, when I went out there, there wasn't any other thoughts other than Another shot. I mean, at least you're done with the tournament. All you have to do is go and play some holes against uh, sudden death uh, against an amazing LPGA Tour player. So, um, yeah, when I went out there with Jennifer, um, all I was thinking about was try to hit fairway, try to hit green, try to make putt. <laughs> uh, very simple, but um, that's ultimately all I was thinking about. Hi, Rose. First off, congratulations. Yesterday, I spoke to you about the composure you've held on the course, and you told me that you're human, you're experiencing butterflies. How are those amplified today, knowing that the position you were walking into? They were certainly amplified. Um, I mean, this is the first time I've been in this position as a professional, given that this is my first start. And I knew that I was doing something pretty special um, just because, you know, everything's so foreign, everything's so new, but I'm in this new position. Um, so when I went out there, I really just, I really tried to enjoy it. I think that's um, the mindset that I had throughout the round that really allowed me to push through and um, figure out how to get that golf ball in the hole. Um, sometimes in golf, the more complicated you think, 
the worse um, the result is. And um, I clearly had, I had moments like that where I overcomplicated things and um, learning from those experiences, I came back and tried to stay simple. Um, so I really went back to what I'm all about uh, and I knew that people were supporting me, but they were supporting me for the better and um, that's all I could ask for. And you talk about that support, and during your trophy ceremony, you mentioned how your fan group is kind of named the Rosebuds. What was it like just having all of that cheering surrounding you, regardless of the outcome, and not kind of leaving your side throughout the entire week? It was actually incredible. Um, I have never had support like that. Um, I can't even believe that these group of men called themselves Rosebuds uh, when they were out there and just... Even when I had a par putt that was probably at like a foot, they would be like, go Rose. Like, <laughs> and I would just, throughout the week, I told my caddy, I was like, this is actually hilarious. I never imagined anyone to be cheering for me this loud. And I appreciated every single bit of that support. Um, and yeah, it was, it was low key embarrassing just because it was, you know, I would have this small little par putt and uh, make it and they would just go wild. Or even if I hit it in the fairway, they're like, go Rose every single time. Um, but I really enjoyed their presence. It was really fun. And I think that's what the game of golf should be. Just being outspoken, being fun, silly and going from there. And the last one for me, what is your biggest motivator, whether it's something in, that you internalize or something that comes from external factors that you truly embody when you go out and have these big moments? For sure. Um, so one thing that, especially, you know, growing up, um, I grew up in a Christian household and um, going into college, I really wanted to you know, have an identity outside of golf. Um, because sometimes as an athlete, it's, you know, um, it kind of takes a toll on you if you think that golf is your whole world. Um, and for me, I realized that being Christian is very much my identity. And um, knowing that there's a higher power above that's always watching over me and um, always working to become better as um, a child of God is something that, I've been trying to work on um, that I will continue to work on throughout my whole life, but that's kind of my driving force. Um, just to be faithful, be thankful, and um, I guess be a good presence to those around me. So um, that allows me to go out there and realize that I'm just, you know, a, a vessel just trying to do her own thing, and um, I'm doing it for the glory of God. We do have some on the Zoom that I will throw on, and then we'll come to you, Tom, as you get the mic. Uh, Beth Ann, why don't you go ahead and unmute yourself? We're making Hi, Rose. Congratulations. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> uh, my first one, just for housekeeping, what, what club did you hit on that last approach? I hit a four hybrid. Four hybrid. Okay, perfect. Yes. When did you first feel like you, you had a platform and what's been the best advice you've been given on, on how to use it? Hmm. Um, I will say I've started uh, realizing my influence on juniors in my area. Um, especially, you know, playing uh, AJGA and playing Rolex TOC, being Rolex Player of the Year twice. Um, in my last Rolex TOC, actually, um, there's a bunch of, I, I was eight, 17, and there are a bunch of 12, 13 year olds who are just entering the AGGA scene, um, they asked for my signature. And um, it's quite interesting because I'm in the same playing field as them. Um, but I've that's when I really realized that, hey, like people know me and um, it's important to, I guess, um, be a good presence to them, be a good role model. Um, and they, they're kind of watching your every move um, to gain as inspiration. So. From there, um, going into college, I really realized that 
Um, I do have a platform of people and um, they're all rooting for me, but they're also trying to gain inspiration from what I do, from my practice, my work ethic, um, to what I do off the golf course, um, to relax, recover, et cetera. So um, yeah, it's just been ongoing from there. It escalated a little more. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much. And then just really quick, I don't know if you've had a chance to look at your phone. Any any uh, really cool messages on there or, or, or an exchange maybe that you had with your, your father or someone who's there in person that was really meaningful? My phone is currently in my golf bag and I don't know where it is. <laughs> so um, I am a little worried to look at that phone, but I'll be, I'll be looking at messages and uh, really reliving every single moment that I've had today. Thank you. All right, back here in the corner. Hey, Rose, Perry Snook, Pix11 Sports. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Um, now, now that it's all said and done, is there any part of you uh, that is kind of happy it went to a playoff? I mean, as far as the script <laughs> of this thing goes, with the way you tore it up the past two days, you know, finishing the day at one over wasn't, wouldn't be the ideal storybook ending that beating out a former major champ was in a playoff. I mean, is there any, anything to that? Um, I will say it's, it's good for the story. It's good for, um, the storytelling part of it. And, um, I've done this before, especially at Anwa. <laughs> so, um, I'm just, I'm just so thankful. I can't even begin to express how amazing this day has been. Um, being under pressure, um, having the thrills, having the crowds, um, it's, it's just, I don't know. I can't even explain how great, how um, well written this whole day could have ended. Um, but that playoff definitely provided a little bit of flavor, a little bit of thrill for everyone. So hope you guys enjoy the show. <laughs> <laughs> we, we certainly did. It was great. Uh, last one for me. You know, when we spoke earlier in the week, you, you said that you definitely did see this as a new step, as a new change. Is there any part of you now that feels the transition's over? I mean, you, you just beat out a major winner in a playoff to win your first ever professional. You know, have, have you flipped the switch to pro? Transition has just started. I will say that this has been an incredible experience, but I have not seen anything thus far. Um, going forward, I understand that there's going to be a lot of bumps in the road, and I'm expecting a lot of obstacles that I'm going to have to uptake and uphold. But... Um, I I think this is just the start. This is just a stepping stone. Um, and it's crazy that this is my first win, first professional win already, but um, no doubt there's going to be a lot more um, things happening down the road, and I'm just going to be continuing to learn inside the ropes. Thanks. Congrats. We'll take a few more, guys. She does have to 10 o'clock ferry to catch. So let's, oh, let's yeah, shoot. let's go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, Zephyr. Rose, how difficult was it balancing the early week obligations, whether it was media or sponsors, with preparing for the actual golf that you played? Of course. Um, I generally feel like I've, since I've had practice uh, with media and playing afterwards um, from big amateur events such as NCAAs and Augusta National. Um, you know, this week seemed more normal for me, but at the same time, it wasn't. Um, it was definitely amplified more with me turning professional, with everyone kind of wondering, hey, why did you decide now and uh, why here? So, um, but for me, I, I generally just thought that this week was just another tester for who I am. And um, I knew that balancing golf was gonna be very hard. So immediately after media, I would tap into, okay, it's go time. You have to work, you have to be able to play on the golf course, put your ball where you need to um, and go from there. So um, I really tried to make that quick switch in between. Rose, Tom Canavan with the AP. Was there any point today where you're sitting there and the birdies aren't going and you're scrambling for par that you're sitting there going, I'm losing this? Um, well, I never really looked at the leaderboard until 16. 
So I had no idea where I was in terms of position. Um, but I knew that the golf course was playing hard. My two playing partners who are amazing, Gino and Anna, they were struggling on the golf course. So I had no doubt that there were probably a lot of people out there who were also struggling just because the course was playing really tough today. Um, but I knew that scrambling parses was all I could do. Um, if I couldn't put it close to the hole, I'm going to have to be scrambling. So I uh, never really thought about where I was in position, but I had to get that ball in the hole somehow. There was a guy who said incredible few weeks for Rose, defends her NCAA title, then wins her pro debut. Go card. A guy named Woods. Tiger Woods? <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> What can I say to that? <laughs> I think the reaction itself says everything. But um, it's just so amazing that he's even keeping up the tabs with me. <laughs> and final question. You can play anywhere you want now. Atlantic City's not on the cards. Atlantic City? Sorry. It's right next week. Oh, yes. Um, it will not be <laughs> just because there's a lot going on next week, non-golf related. <laughs> And I plan to stick to that plan. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm sorry, um, everyone else. She does have to catch a ferry. So thank you so much, Rose. Thank you. Um, we appreciate you. your time. Appreciate it.